SMS chez Yang Tan. Sir, I will first address cards by members on public transport. Mr. Faisal Manap asks about bus services in Kaki Bukit. On bus services 137 and 137A, LTA introduced service 137A in 2019 to provide more trips during the morning peak. This reduced the headway from 15 minutes, which is within bus contracting model standards, to a maximum of 10 minutes during the morning peak. Some of the headways are within five minutes. Commuters can also use the My Transport app to estimate bus arrival timings and further reduce their waiting times at the bus stop. In January 2023, the average heaviest one hour loading for service 137 at the bus stops before the Bertot North station was 58%, which is within acceptable levels. However, on a few days in January 2023, the operator reduced two trips for service 137A due to manpower shortages, and this resulted in the higher loading levels which Mr Faisal described. These trips have been restored and the situation has improved. I want to assure Mr Faisal that LTA will continue to monitor and we will introduce additional bus trips if necessary to meet higher commuter demand during peak periods. The second issue was on town link feeder services. This was the previous name used before the bus contracting model was introduced in 2016. We now refer to such arrangements as intra-town feeder services, where feeder services would travel around the town, usually in two loops from the bus interchange. There are trade-offs to run such services, which is why they are no longer introduced for new routes. First, these services often ply a much longer route compared to a conventional hub and spoke model with shorter feeder services connecting different parts of the town to key transport nodes. The bus timings are therefore subject to more variability along the journey, which may lead to reduced reliability and longer waiting times for commuters. About 10% of commuters use intra-town feeder services to travel to another part of the town. The large majority of commuters use them to connect to MRT and other bus services at key transport nodes. And this means that their commuting needs will actually be better served with a hub and spoke model instead of using intra-town feeder services. The hub and spoke model is also more flexible in meeting new demand, for example, when a new BTO estate is constructed within the town. Mr Gantiambu asks about city direct services. For City Direct Service 671 from Sengkang to Central Business District, ridership has been increasing as more residents move into the new BTO blocks at Sengkang West. I'm happy to share with Mr Gan that LTA will add an additional trip during the morning peak in the second quarter of this year. Ms Yu Wanling asks for an update on the transport options for our workers at Tuas Port. There's currently one public bus service from Tuas West Road MRT station to Tuas Port. PSA also operates shuttle services for its staff between Tuas Port and about 50 locations across Singapore. MPA will form a tripartite committee with government agencies, industry partners and unions to discuss and jointly propose practical solutions to improve accessibility to Tuas Port. So let me now speak about Maritime Singapore. Like waves in the ocean, the global maritime sector has experienced ups and downs over the years. We remain optimistic about the medium to longer term outlook for Maritime Singapore, which will be boosted by the development of Tuas Port and the growth of our international maritime centre. However, there are driving forces we need to prepare for. Governments and companies are reconfiguring supply chains to enhance resilience. Port operators and shipping lines are integrating adjacent functions and tapping on digitalisation and technology. There's also an increased emphasis on environmental sustainability the International Maritime Organization could announce a higher level of ambition to reduce greenhouse gas emissions later this year. Corporates and individuals are becoming more conscious of their carbon footprint. Mr Raj Joshua Thomas filed a card on how we will ensure the relevance and competitiveness of our maritime sector. We plan to do so 
in three ways. Enhancing digitalization, improving sustainability, and streamlining business costs. Mr. Satyani Supad asked for an update on our digitalization plans. We are on track to provide full 5G coverage in our anchorages, fairways, terminals, and boarding grounds by mid 2025. 12 maritime 5G base stations will be set up, of which three will be ready by 2023 to support the testing and development of new applications such as remote pilotage and digital bunkering. MPA will launch its next generation vessel traffic management system in 2025. This uses data analytics and machine learning to enable our port to safely handle more complex and numerous vessel movements. We will launch a tender to develop the system prototype this year for testing in a real-time operating environment. Mr. Satyandi also asked about digital oceans. MPA worked with the China Maritime Safety Administration to develop and trial standards for the exchange of electronic certificates and port clearance data to facilitate efficient vessel clearance. The standards will be operationalized for ships traveling between the port of Guangzhou and Singapore later this year. China and Singapore have also submitted a joint paper to the IMO to promote global adoption of these standards. Another key enabler is common data infrastructures. They facilitate trusted and secure data sharing, resulting in better visibility and increased efficiency across the supply chain. Ms. Janet Ang asked about the development of a Singapore Trade Data Exchange, or SG TradeX. Last year, MPA co-funded a data sharing pilot for ship supplies procurement and lighter-rich logistics with SG TradeX, Jurong Port, and other partners. The pilot reduces manual data reconciliation and can save the industry over $20 million annually. In 2022, MPA expanded the industry digital plan to all sea transport subsectors. More than 3,000 SMEs can now apply for funding support to adopt pre-approved digital solutions, and I encourage them to do so. So I agree with Mr. Satyandi that digitalization will increase cyber attack risk. We need robust cyber defenses. First, for critical information infrastructure in MPA and our port operators, we have upgraded the existing Maritime Security Operations Center with more advanced capabilities to enhance early threat detection, monitoring, response, information sharing, and analysis. As cyber threats evolve, we will continue to expand our capabilities. Next, MPA will establish a Maritime Cyber Assurance and Operations Centre in collaboration with the industry. When fully operational in 2025, it will provide real-time security monitoring and disseminate information to mitigate cyber threats, advise on post-incident measures, and facilitate information sharing and training for stakeholders. So I'll now touch on environmental sustainability. Decarbonizing is critical for Maritime Singapore's long-term competitiveness. However, the transition to a greener future will involve costs and trade-offs. Similar to digitalization, the government will walk this journey with our companies. But it is important also for businesses and business owners to take action and to start to embark on the journey. From 2030, new harbour craft operating in our port waters must be fully electric, be capable of using B100 biofuels or be compatible with net zero fuels, such as hydrogen. MPA has made good progress in supporting the electrification of hovercraft. Pilots for the first full electric ferry by the consortium led by Capital Offshore and Marine and full electric lighter craft by the consortium led by SeaTac Solutions will commence later this year. MPA is also working with terminal and hovercraft operators to pilot the implementation of charging stations. The first charging station will be deployed by Shell at the Shell Energy and Chemicals Park Singapore on Pulau Bukum by the first half of 2023 to support full electric ferries owned and operated by Penguin International. This will form part of a larger charging infrastructure implementation master plan which MPA will roll out by 2025. The transition to a sustainable future will take time. We need to start now to achieve 
our 2050 net zero emissions targets. Mr Chairman, while Singapore does not compete on cost alone, there are areas where we could help businesses to save time and money by reviewing our rules and regulations. The work is ongoing. I'll share three examples. First, we're reviewing our transshipment procedures at the land checkpoints. Currently, the transshipment of goods through our land checkpoints at Woodlands and Tuas is considered import to be re-exported. Companies must apply for two permits from customs, one for importing the goods and another for exporting them, resulting in higher administrative and compliance costs. The review streamlines land transshipment procedures through the use of transshipment permits, similar to existing practices for air and sea transshipment. This will reduce the number of permits that companies need to apply for, with potential cost savings of up to $40 for each transshipment. The total savings for the industry could amount to $2 million annually. Next, we're reviewing the requirements for exports at our air checkpoint. Companies are required to screen their cargo before export, which may involve physically opening the cargo for inspection. Companies with appropriate supply chain security controls in place can apply to the police for consideration to receive a reduced level of screening on their cargo. These requirements were put in place for good reasons, to ensure safety and security. They have served us well, upholding Singapore's position as a trusted supply chain hub. However, there is scope to further calibrate the requirements based on risk management. For example, we could reduce the level of screening for goods exported through Singapore if they come from overseas companies with strict safety and security processes in place. Finally, we are exploring ways to move goods more efficiently between land checkpoints and our seaports to support multimodal connectivity. Currently, only Singapore-registered container trucks and Singaporean or work permit drivers are allowed to enter our container terminals. Trucks from Malaysia that are not Singapore-registered and have foreign drivers will have to offload their containers outside the port after entering Singapore and load them onto Singapore-registered trucks with Singaporean or work permit drivers before these containers are allowed to enter our container terminals. This double handling is not productive as it leads to increased manpower requirements and business costs. We are also short of local drivers. PSA is working with the industry to allow non-Singapore registered trucks and non-Singaporean drivers under local logistics and haulier companies to assess the container terminals and handle containers. They will do this in a phased approach to ensure safety and security. The companies and drivers will be subject to PSA's approval after attending workplace safety training and assessments. Allied Container Services is the first company that PSA has approved under this new arrangement. Allied Container Services will now be able to directly transport the goods of its customers from Malaysia to the container terminals in Singapore without double handling. Mr. Spe uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, in Mandarin, please. 主席先生在进行中让工作流程严谨的公司面对较少的货物安检条规
。目前，马国注册货车必须将货物转移到本地注册货车上，并由新加坡籍或持有工作准证的司机驾驶，才可才可以进入集装箱码头。新加坡港务集团 （PSA） 将允许本地物流和货运公司旗下的。外国注册车辆，啊，这个货车以及外籍司机进入集装箱码头，这些公司和司机必须通过工作场所安全培训以及评估，并获得 PSA 的批准。获准的公司便将便能将货物从马来西亚直接的运到新加坡的集装箱码头，这样一来能省时。省钱也更方便。劳资证三方三方携手合作，齐力检讨监管条例和营造轻商环环境。我呼吁企业充分利用政府所提供的资源，提高工作的效率。在这个数码时代，扬帆起航，乘风破浪。Mr. Chairman, I'm also glad to know that. PSA, the Singapore Transport Association, the Container Depot and Logistics Association, and Enterprise Singapore have worked together to develop Op e Truck app in November 2022. It allows the haulier community to exchange data, job pool, and integrate solutions for trips made by their trucks. Currently, each truck makes up to 12 trips a day on average, but about 30% are empty trips. With dynamic job allocation and job pooling provided by the app, the number of empty trips will be reduced by up to 50%. This will reduce the carbon footprints of the trucks, equivalent to planting up to 300,000 trees a year. So we need to enhance our competitiveness to provide good jobs and career opportunities for our people. At the same time, we need to continue building a future-ready workforce with the right skills and expertise. In response to Ms. Janet Ang. We have put in place several schemes over the years to attract and develop a steady pipeline of maritime talent. Last year, I announced that MPA and our tripartite partners would fund a new Sail Milestone Achievement Program, we call Sail Map (MAP), to support the earnings of our local seafarers. Ms. Noor Fahana was one of the 41 seafarers who benefited from this program. Under Sail Map, she received five thousand dollars for attaining her Class One certificate of competency, or what they call COC, and this is the highest level of certification. This helped to offset her training costs for COC Class One, and will support her plans to pursue a Master of Science in Maritime Studies at the Nanyang Technological University. I agree with Mr. Gan Tianpo that we need a pipeline of local seafarers to support our essential hovercraft sector. Sail Map is designed to deal with the challenges unique to ocean-going seafarers who sail for extended periods, while our seafarers within the hovercraft sector can disembark and return home to their families more frequently. MPA, the Employment and Employability Institute, or E2I, and Workforce Singapore have designed training programs to groom local seafarers to become hovercraft captains and chief engineers. The program fees are fully funded. And trainees receive training allowances. MPA will continue to strengthen the training and support for our local seafarers, and work with tripartite partners to attract and retain locals for these roles. So I hope our young people will take up maritime-related causes and consider making maritime your part of call. Thank you.